So when you guys and in the comment section these are Nazis. These keep are, blaming these us are, for destroying these the are neighborhood, Nazis. We, we didn't we were we was pawns in this game. Less than pawns. <laughs> Less than pawns. El Chapo's a pawn. See what I'm saying? So that made big meat or something. It's not even on the chessboard. Yeah. On the global scale. Right, when they I know you like, get the same comments I get. You know. And then just uh, one comment that just come in where the, we had he was responding to something about Maserati Rick. Right. He's like well, I hope y'all got boots on the ground to rebuild the neighborhoods that you destroyed. And I'm like, man, y'all give us too much credit. It would have been a different we didn't have that kind of it. influence to yeah. destroy mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. We was playing a game that was already set up and the rules were arranged. Man, you were hanging out on the sidelines getting called into substitution for two minutes <laughs> for an ongoing soccer game. You know Good analogy. I mean, I mean for real. Yeah. It just because somebody scored a goal or did something cool, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the game pre-existed. It continues to exist. And the referee is the U.S. government. So they... The they, referee is the U.S. government. And they, they, choose they say basically win. he yeah. got... He only did the 10 because of his loyalty for not snitching out the CIA. That, I, you know, for that guy, because mind you, he was in USP Atlanta. Where your father's buddy, well not buddy, but somebody he talked to, was murdered. Vince Papa. Who was stealing dope. Was the fr that very French connection. <clears throat> dope that got seized and went into the New York police evidence locker. When they went to go to trial on it, it was flopped. Right, so just to give you guys a uh, backdrop of what he's talking about. When Pops, the, 70, the 32 man indictment where him and Eddie, the other 32 go down. Eddie go to Leavenworth. They send Pops down to Atlanta. When he catch up in Atlanta, half the people that's down there is friends of Carmine Lamadozzi, the Italians, Gambino. Crew. There was like nine people killed in USP Atlanta in like four months. Some were other things, but about four of them were connected to the French Connection. And I think Vince Papa was like getting the, the mix for them. No, 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 no. Vince Papa was a New York police detective who stole. When they made the, some of the early, the record case was actually... 50k like it was a sort of like a think of it like it was a a global bmf where there's a bunch of people are the french connection and there's all kind of deals going on meats and tea are like the glue of everything but it's stuff going on all around the country well think about record and a few other people as like the glue they call it they had the triangle of death <clears throat> where they had the prosecutor put up Green pins for money transfers, red for drug transfers because they never did the money dope, and black pins for murder. And when you did all the murders from Europe to the U.S. down into Brazil, the triangle of death. And so or down into Paraguay, it was yeah. Vince Papa knew Pop knew some of the same Italians, and I don't know if it was the which one of the families it was. Gambino, he was a Gambino. Gambino. So, so he definitely knew that clique. So that's he, who Doc Lombardoso was. Right. He cuts in the pop and basically he knows that they think he's snitching. Like Vince Papa knew. He was a cop too. Yeah. That. Well, he wasn't no, but here's the thing with Papa. He wasn't, he was a New York police detective who stole the shit and resold it. <laughs> now, mind you, that was huge amounts. Of, so he resold it to the very people that was seized from. Now, probably, if you went deep into the archives, you might find Vince Papa is the one that provided information or helped arrest some of the cases. They thought he was telling. So he, oh, I mean, he was a cop. He was. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, I get you locked up, and then I steal the dope from your case and resell it to your crew. Oh. Sound like somebody you might want to kill. Yeah. So, but we cut an old man and say, "Can you talk to your friends in New York? Tell no. them, man, I'm not 
And Pop was like, man, I can't I, get involved in that Guinea thing, man. You all right? You he my was man. Smart for that. Yeah, he was like, but uh, I can't get that. So, cause they that's y'all Italian shit. I'm on the black folks side. Because they, they, they killed the boss of the, um, they killed Tommy Eboli, who was the boss of the Lucchese family. Cause in about is he down in Atlanta too? Cause they was killing no, down they in killed Atlanta him on the street. Oh, they come this In '59, Vito Genovese got rigged. <laughs> Carlo Gambino helped the police put a snitch into Vito Genovese's. These guys are real snakes, like the real organized. Carmine Persico was there, called the snake. He was doing time with the old man too. Actually. Carlo Gambino orchestrated Nelson Cantaloupe's uh, uh, Puerto Rican to infiltrate Vito Genovese and got Vito Genovese a heroin case. So that's why Vito Genovese was in USP Atlanta when Joe Valachi came. Joe Valachi, I forget what happened. He, he mistakenly thought someone was gonna try to kill him. So he went and assaulted Vito Genovese's right hand man or something. And then he knew he was marked for death and that's when he told. If Vito Genovese had not have been in federal prison for that heroin case, Joe Valachi would have never testified. And for the audience, Joe Valachi's credit as being really the first mob guy to, to really break spill Omo the, Omota. Omerta and really go into detail. Because he, he, he gave him the whole chart, right? Well, it was a book, yeah. And a movie. Yeah, yeah. And a movie. But yeah. it was Charles a, it was a, Charles a Yeah, but it was a nonfiction book that really was important that like because he charted it out right these are the dimes the, these FBI, are the, the fbi didn't acknowledge it circa 1960 there officially was no mafia there was italian criminals in different cities but they didn't know there's no commission and they don't meet that's crazy that's not real so but back to Joe so, Velaggi, and he wouldn't have been doing that unless he was afraid of his life for assaulting either vito genovese or his buddy or i forget what the story was so the mafia said we're out of heroin. So that's when they came up with, we're gonna give it to the blacks and the Puerto Ricans. But now as it gets into like 1972, they're like, shit, there's too much money being made. We won't back in. So they gave Tommy Eboli $4 million to cop and something, and I got all fucked up. And I think Vincent Papa was part of that seizure. They got fucked up. Some, yeah, it was all, I, I, you know, it's kind of complicated. But, yeah, he was a New York police detective. There was the four million got seized. And who was that real tough guy that served Frank Mathers at the end? Uh, Lou Cirillo. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then you have the last of the dangerous Jews. Uh, uh, Sperling. Who just died in prison a couple years yeah, ago. Yeah, he was down there. He was down there. Mickey Barnes is a girl. He's worse than that. He's, he's like, hey, no, he's, that's he a was, disrespect to those guys. He's worse than that. Yeah, he <laughs> was in from 73 to 20. Mickey got his son popped. 13. I mean, he did 45 years. But speaking of Mickey, in prison. Mickey also was getting that print that same bag again. But he wasn't that getting bag. it from the French. He was getting it from the Italians. Who was get, yeah, he was getting it from uh, M.M. Uh, her or Maddie Madonna. Maddie Madonna. Is that the guy he was locked up with? No, that's who he got the case with. Yeah. So Maddie Madonna wasn't even a. This is how disconnected the mob wanted to be from the heroin trade. They wouldn't even serve the blacks themselves. It was they had the Jew, who weren't yet made. Like Maddie Madonna wasn't made. Associate. That's right. But he did that 20 years. And he got out, and they jumped him straight to Capo. He didn't have to be a soldier. He's still out. Is he still alive? He got another case. Like they made him the boss. He got a. I think he's got another murder. I forget what happened with him. But he had a new case. But he was alive. He just got like a life case in maybe 2018 or something. But it's crazy that that shit all that started back in World War II spilled all the way over into the 60s, 70s. It's listen. And affected warfare. Could that World War II where you had the not from about. 1936 to 1945, you had this violent, oppressive, beyond just a military state, like a sick, you know, we're rounding people up and just murdering them just because, which is kind of a new thing in history, yeah. you know, like that direct. Like, we're not even using you as slave, just come die. It created all these monsters who then 
when the I, when it was and the war was ending and they were saying okay the world is going to be communist versus capitalist well who's the best who what expendable pawns can we the u.s government these nazi killers they've been killing and robbing and pillaging for nine years these people is valuable let them go to south america and we'll activate them as needed but them guys had their own agenda too